In today's episode, we'll be looking at the latest Starship developments happening down there in Boca Chica, Texas, as well as the status of the Crew Dragon capsule that's going to take American astronauts to the space station in a couple months. We'll briefly hit up some changes happening internally at SpaceX, prep ourselves for this weekend's Starlink launch, and finish with today's double header honorable mention. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Because look, this ain't no typical off-brand generic cola channel. This is the first, the original, trend-setting plates on YouTube to find all your SpaceX news. What I'm making is classic Coke. So buckle up. I'm Kevin. Yes, believe it or not, it is me. And this is SpaceX in the news. This week, Elon Musk was back in Boca to check in on Starship's progress. He tweeted a somewhat rare picture of inside one of the assembly tents and then followed it up with some pretty awesome insight. SpaceX has already started building SN2. The first two domes you see up front in the shot here are for that second Starship spacecraft. And the third one on the right there is for SN1. Toward the back and in the center, technicians are putting together the bottom portion of SN1 where the aftmost bulkhead will be integrated along with three Raptor engines. Also way back in the rear corner of the tent are a couple more tank rings. Since January 1st, more than 34 stainless steel rings have been built, but most of them since being scrapped because SpaceX was working out the best welding techniques possible at the time. Happening outside the tent is even more work on SN1. This week, SpaceX flipped the bottom methane bulkhead integrated with some steel rings and mated it with the upper tank bulkhead, completing the build of the liquid methane tank which you can now see here sitting next to Mark 1's upper half. Elon confirmed that in about six months, SpaceX will phase out the 301 stainless steel they are currently using for Starship to a new custom alloy dubbed SpaceX 30X. I personally haven't heard much about this 30X steel, so if any of you have, go ahead and let us all know down below. Lastly, the new vehicle assembly building is taking advantage of that open South Texas airspace. The structure keeps getting taller as the days go by, maybe even too tall for a single Starship. Maybe it's just right porridge for a super heavy booster? Nah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wishful thinking, but maybe. Moving on to Crew Dragon and Demo 2, the capsule that will soon be the first commercial spacecraft to take humans to space went on a field trip to the Hawthorne facility's built-in anechoic chamber. Here it underwent a routine EMI test to confirm that it's protected from both internal and external sources of electromagnetic radiation. And the test must have went well because SpaceX also tweeted out a picture of their employees with the capsule before its departure to the Florida launch site where it is now located with the rest of the rocket. Its mission, Demo 2, has been given a working launch date of May 7th, but thy date tis fluid and could be pushed up to April. Just some NASA paperwork and maybe one or two Mark III parachute drop tests are all that's left to get done. And speaking of NASA, do you remember NASA bigwig William Gerstenmaier? Widely considered to be one of the world's most knowledgeable in terms of human spaceflight, last year Gerstenmaier was reassigned to a lesser office under NASA Administrator Bridenstine, where it is because of the delays with the SLS program that were happening under his supervision. Well, after his demotion, Bill left NASA never to be heard from again. By me, at least. Well, like a nerdy version of Jesus Christ, Gerstenmaier has since been resurrected, and now he's working for SpaceX at their Hawthorne, California headquarters as a consultant for their reliability engineering team, reporting directly to SpaceX's vice president of mission assurance, Hans. Hans. Don't forget this weekend, we have another Starlink launch to look forward to, but it's no longer scheduled for tomorrow morning. Today, SpaceX updated us that because of poor weather in the recovery zone, they are now targeting this Sunday at 10.25 a.m. Eastern for liftoff. Once again, I'll be covering SpaceX's live stream right here on my channel, so if you'd like a date for the show, I'm here for you, sweetie. And now, it's time for today's double header honorable mention. Okay, so we actually have quite a few things to discuss in this segment. So we're gonna start things off with Artemis funding. And to do that, I'm gonna take you back to the beginning. In 2017, President Trump signed his space policy directive aimed at sending Americans to the moon by 2024 and then on to Mars. This directive will ensure America's space program once again leads and inspires all of humanity. And this year at Trump's State of the Union address, he called for Congress to fully fund NASA's Artemis program. I am asking Congress to fully fund the Artemis program 
to ensure that the next man and the first woman on the moon will be American astronauts, using this as a launching pad to ensure that America is the first nation to plant its flag on Mars. Well, just this week, the White House followed through with this request and is asking Congress for $25.2 billion for NASA in fiscal year 2021. This is a 12% increase than last year, and 12.3 billion of that is earmarked specifically for Artemis. Bridenstine, quite pleased with this news, stated, quote, this is a 21st century budget worthy of 21st century space exploration and one of the strongest budgets in NASA history. And that most noteworthy of all is the president's direct funding of more than $3 billion for the development of a human landing system. The first time a human lander has received direct funding since the Apollo program. In total, Artemis will cost about $35 billion, so if this budget were to get final approval, that funding momentum would need to slightly increase throughout the following years. All right, this next part is happening by request. Last week, we didn't have an honorable mention, and a few of you said you wanted me to do something on Starliner's recent problems. So if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right. This is our second edition of Dishonorable Mention. So yeah, Boeing, they tend to get a lot of flack in the SpaceX community. And if you're not entirely sure why, uh, we're gonna make it apparent to you right now. First of all, in 2014, Boeing tried to muscle out SpaceX by pushing for a sole contract with NASA's commercial crew program and Starliner. And before that, in the 1990s, Boeing conspired to steal trade secrets from Lockheed Martin and used it to mislead the Air Force so they could acquire more lucrative contracts. That's why quite a few people in the SpaceX circles don't really have too much love for Boeing. But with that being said, I'm personally glad that NASA has more than one commercial crew provider. I just wish it was Mad Mike Hughes instead. So just in case that wasn't enough reason for you to at least distrust Boeing, let's get into this week's news. A couple months ago, Boeing's Starliner craft performed a pad abort test, but it failed to deploy its third chute. Regardless, afterward, both Boeing and NASA touted the mission as a success and moved on to its orbital launch debut in December. During this orbital test, Starliner was supposed to dock with the space station, like Crew Dragon did many months earlier in the spring, but instead, after separating from the rocket, the computer began commanding thousands of maneuvering thruster burns, using up most of its propellant. This created more than enough cause to scrub their rendezvous with the station, and instead the capsule stayed in low Earth orbit for a couple of days before deorbiting and coming back down to Earth, which it did successfully. Even all three chutes deployed. How about that? Again, NASA and Boeing played it off like it wasn't that big of a deal, claiming that had astronauts been on board, they could have manually taken control and still reached the station. But now we're finding out that during those 48 hours Starliner drifted in low Earth orbit, the capsule actually experienced another potentially fatal flaw in its computer coding. A software bug, if left unchecked, would have frozen some of Starliner's thruster valves that would have prevented or severely hampered the capsule's trunk from maneuvering properly after its jettison away from the main spacecraft. This could have caused the trunk to collide with the heat shield of the capsule, potentially damaging it before its descent into the atmosphere. But we're not gonna end this episode on such a gloomy note. Nah, check this out. If you currently find yourself wishing you could go to space, <laughs> maybe on a buggy Starliner capsule, wish no more. Next month, NASA will begin the application process for the next batch of astronaut candidates. All you need is a master's degree in a scientific field like engineering, medicine, or biology, and a nauseating amount of flight time as a pilot. Check out NASA's website at nasa.gov if you're interested. All right, before we wrap things up, I just wanna quickly share with you guys something I got in the mail today. It's really cool. It's a street sign tailored specifically for this channel, <laughs> made by one of you, a fan of the channel. She runs an Etsy store called Beloved From Above, and she makes tailored street signs and stuff. It's really sweet. Again, she's not a sponsor of the channel. She just sent this to me as a free gift and asked me what I would like. And I told her, you know, that Rocket Road street sign in Boca Chica is really awesome. I wish I had one of those. So, you know, th that's what she made for me. It's awesome. <laughs> I love it. If you like one yourself or anything else, go ahead and check out her store, show her some love. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. These episodes are brought to you by my eccentric members and patrons that support this channel. And if you'd like even more SpaceX news in greater depth, check out the links below in the description. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I'll see you right back here in a couple days for Starlink 4. Until that time, Godspeed. Godspeed.